What do we what do we want to do? You guys want to figure out what we want to talk about. It's all up to you. I was open to whatever I was working on last night. Uh, it was just like me trying to figure out how to pace out this track. Is there some weird background noise? Is it like a fan? It might be. It's a fan behind me. I tried to keep it down. everything back around. Yep, they're the... Yeah, these are the 250 DT-70s, 770s. And then these are... I can pull them in the frame. The DT 880s? Yep, 880 Pro. Which they both kind of. I think I got these first. For um, when I was like working on a laptop and I'd be in like different spaces and like wasn't my dorm room and I'd be all over the place. Yeah, okay, the fan. Um, there's the loud one, which I could turn that one off. But then the small one kind of keeps it from cooking in here. So, one sec. Okay, I need to figure out how to get rid of this delay. Because it's like five, ten seconds of me watching the video over here. That sounds weird. <laughs> a bit louder. Yeah, double feature. <laughs> the mix and uh, a different kind of mix. So... Yeah. By the way, I'm just going to go ahead and plug everything real quick. If you want to join over here on Discord, there's a link in the description. It should be. Hang out. Get notified earlier when I go on the streams or whenever there's a video. Or just talk about production and stuff like that. Um, so high end, what about the high end? Secret songs, we can get to that. I mean, they're not secret, I guess. This is a secret. It's, I mean, it's, I guess no one else knows about it except me and the few people who watch like the random videos I post to Instagram, I guess. But yeah, I'll give you a, this one kind of a story, so. Yeah, so this is sitting in class like a few years ago. So 20, I think I said 2015. Yeah. And just listening, I think it was like between classes, just listening to my teachers like talk and everyone else like asking questions. I'm just kind of hanging out in the background as I usually do. Then one of them just start, gets on a piano and start just playing around. And like, I first of all, I didn't know he was a piano teacher because he was new. Well, I didn't know he played the piano, I mean. He's one of like the music tech teachers, professor. And he just starts playing around. I'm like, I'm going to record this on my phone real quick. So I did. And I figured like at some point it would be useful. And yeah, four years later it is. So here's the just recording I got. Just talking and everything. Well... Thank you. 
this way. My name isn't like Ashley Queen or anything. He just gets off and leaves. <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't know. It just like sat on my computer, I guess, for the last years. And I just was going through stuff, cleaning out everything. And then, boom, this was a thing. It's like maybe I can try and do something with it. So I rearranged it because I could pick out some chords and some little cool progressions he had. And came up with this loop. Basically that. And then I started building around that. Then there's a second part I'm not too sure of. It's kind of weird. Like, it's... I don't know. Like it's timed, the way I put it is weird. I feel like I could, you know, use that for like a transition because it kind of goes modal, like it flips keys and kind of ambiguous I think so it could be useful yeah then I <laughs> added a cool like jazzy kind of upright bass reinforce it with a good sub all this clean it up some effects bit of reverb I like the like crustiness of it i know because it's like it was recorded on an iphone 5 5s i think <laughs> with a terrible mic so there's all that hiss and air sound the room sound is like big wide open reflective it's not a good recording space it's a lot better now but then it was like in construction area we were like putting together sound traps and stuff and uh yeah but kind of has like that vinyl feel how that would be nice and gross but like in a good way, you know, like, uh, yeah. Anyway, then add some drums and see what we got. Add a little filter, you know, make it liquid. <laughs> a bit more laid back. That's kind of a Lensman vibe to it, I think. Yeah, vintage digital. <laughs> iPhone 5 is however many years old. <laughs> Add a little pad. Few more drum. Put together a kick that sounds a bit better than like the standard loop kick. Oh yeah, then there's that re dumb guitar stuff I recorded that doesn't make any sense, so I'm just gonna leave it out. Cause I was like, yeah, maybe this could be useful for record uh, to record some guitar parts, and then. None of them fit at all because they're completely different, like, I guess, vibe to the everything else that's going on. Didn't make a guitar solo at all. But yeah, that's all I got so far. <laughs> I feel like it it's kind of has like Lensman, a little bit like Caliber vibe, but yeah. Bass is a bit heavy. Yeah, so I'm doing this thing that I don't, I haven't normally done to just add a bit more like 
distortion, like harmonic content to the sub. I usually do it, but on the channel and not like a send like I'm about to show you. So I have the sub and let me turn all the sins off. I got pretty strong already. And it's just like a basic sine wave. Yeah, from the, that was a preset that I made from uh, the Nice Fall, that track I did. But yeah, then there's an upright bass. Let me turn that send off. Pretty clean. I just filtered it down. But what I'm doing is sending it to a uh, auxiliary track with basically like a crazy distortion on it. Or not crazy, but just a lot. So what you get is when I like unbalance it, let's say. I'm still working on it, but that's basically but layered together, it adds a bit more character to the sound, right? And that's what you want, especially because it helps poke out on like smaller speakers. Plus it, this helps add a bit down there as long as you don't really cloud up the mix. It really helps and works when you have kind of an open, not too busy mix going on. It works the other way when things are busier, but you'll, I guess, do it differently more for say like reinforcement kind of like you would parallel compression or something like that but yeah if, um mike kiss you might know who he is had an album on hospital has his label gold fat um releases on shogun all that stuff he has a youtube channel as well although he doesn't upload all too much because he just like switched over his computer and stuff too much info anyway but he has a good video on like making these par these like extra sins to uh get a bit more character and push a bit of more harmonics out of it. London Electricity does too, but his videos are like spaced out over Instagram and Facebook. So it's on either one of those. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, yeah, for uh Dillinger style eight oh eights definitely. It's a super good idea. Um Krakota does it a lot in his tracks um spy does it in a I'm trying to think of the track it's on back to basics i want to say chapter one or two one of those albums i could find it but yeah anyway it's common but it's not i guess too common of a thing to think about but it helps so yeah I'm still tweaking it just a little bit more because it's still a little heavy, I think, to my ear. Yeah, but it helps that space. And on like that same send, you can maybe add like a little reverb to give it a bit more character or maybe some delay just to help fill it up. Because like a controlled, like messy or muddiness can help. Like saturation, like tape saturation is a delayed signal anyway, delayed by a little bit. Some of it is. I mean, it, it all, like, depends. But either way, it could help, you know? Anyway, back to the whole thing. <laughs> all right. So, I had started out with the break. Most of us were probably familiar with it. You've heard it a thousand times. There it is by itself. So I did that. Took out the low end because I replaced the kick and added transient master. So it's not like, see how there's a bit more, a lot of more air and a lot more like crustiness and all that high end and, you know, sample from vinyl over and over, spread around the internet a thousand times. You get that like, downgraded quality. You just clean it up with this plugin or any other like it, like a transient designer. You got the SPL transient designer. You got this one. There's a free one called, I think just transient, but it might be windows only. Is this one transient 64 or that's no, just transient by sleepy time records. I think I talked about this in the video over drums once it might, I think that one might be for Mac too though. 
just uh, check it out. Yeah. And then the kick is just kick. It's the kick from the break. Just filter down. Layered with a stronger one. And then they're compressed together just so they fit better. So you got. Yeah. And the compress is. Com are they? I mean, they are compressed, but yeah, just. Uh, like with a good amount, just to blend in together. So like the airiness from the original break pops out on the top end, but you still have like the reinforcement of the stronger kick on the bottom. And together you have, and just for good measure, it's the kick is side chain. So it, everything else pokes out and it transitions clean. Yeah, SPL is sick. The PA bundle. Oh, the plugin alliance. I keep I get like at least three or four emails about that every day. I was like, I don't want to do that amount go with that amount of money just yet. Like it's it's great, but I probably like pick up plugins every now and again they have a sale. That's how I got the uh the Brainworks stereo maker, which I like to use a lot to widen sounds and a few other ones. And all the free plugins they have. Then there's like the guitar distortion pedal, like remake plugins, which are really good too. Especially when you want to like do the parallel distortion or just like crunch something really hard and then layer that in. Or, yeah, some creative. Yeah, then all you have is a few extra loops. I don't know what this is. I think it's like a stock Studio One loop. Then I think this is just another break. Widen it with this plugin I like using. 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 It's free. I think it's Mac and Windows, but it's 32 bit only. That's why I have it on that bridge, unless they updated it. And then, yeah, Transient Master again. Just to knock out some of that room sound. Then a you know, tambourine shaker type thing. And that's the drums. Hello, Des. Hello. How are you going? Yeah, I used to, I still do, just like, oh, new plugin, download it. And now I'm like, okay, am I actually going to use it? <laughs> am I going to make it worth my money, <laughs> you know? So now I'm just like really focused and not trying to like use everything because too many options can just be like, oh, what do I do now? And like you, it'll like inspire you for a second. And then you'll be like, okay, I have this extra thing I don't need like a week later. And I've, I've spent a lot of money. <laughs> I didn't need to spend Christmas money, birthday money, all that kind of stuff that I wish I didn't spend at the time. Nah, that's just me. But yeah, what else do you guys want to do, go over? I can just dip into another project and see what we can pick out from there. Because I'm at kind of a standstill with this one. I don't know what to... Well, I know where to take it, but I just am like hesitant because I feel like it's not really going to go anywhere interesting and i'm just kind of kind of do what i know should happen instead of what i think would be cool or something so i might just save this for later and uh you know take it in a different direction if uh if that comes to it this is my home page <laughs> the surprise pikachu is hilarious um i can go through any of these projects any of them except one because that one's a secret. The one I'm not going to say which one. This one I started last night. It doesn't make any sense. Yet. Just yet. So you want to pick one? Or do you want me to just go into it? Either way. It's all good with me. Toward, more towards the bottom are the like fully finished ones that I just like pick stuff out of. Uh, 
Um, just checking on, make sure the stream is still good. Ooh, nine. Well, hello, all nine of us, nine of you. I wish it would like show me a list or something. Or it just shows me who signed in. That makes sense. Which one is the secret track? <laughs> yeah. None of them are all that secret, but. Or I'll just pick one. It doesn't matter. And I can just switch if you remember what the name is or it's like third from the bottom or something like that. Uh, oh, we can do this one. I played this in the stream earlier or in the mix <laughs> earlier. So we can just go through that project. Well, it's pretty interesting stuff going on there. Ooh. Guys, this is never open when I need it to be. Okay, let's load everything. All right, we are in it. And let me take off all these plugins that are going to make it ruin really bad. Ooh, that's loud. All right. Make sure it's not too loud for the stream. All right. When did the reverb get cut in so much? That's actually, that's why it sounded weird on the stream. Because I bounced it with the snare with a ton of reverb, I think. All right. Anyway, this is uh, this is that track. Release yourself in the dance. Free your inner visions. Yeah, I like a really strong kick. That's my Let thing for sure. Loose. I think that comes from like doing house and stuff like that way before. section i'll skip away to the second half it's basically the same thing except with a extra layer of noise to give it more gritty and kind of drive it forward a bit more you were all dancing to the same beat the kick in this track or before because this one is <laughs> there's four when i in the when i made it let's pick them out i think yeah all right so it's a kick this top track is from how i make my like hats and stuff out of this and like groovy stuff the studio drummer from native instruments yeah so wrong track For some reason it's still doing it. all right 
Oh, it's audio. That's why it's not the. Oh, still the wrong track. Yeah, it's like really compressed for the the hats groove, but uh, kick. Yeah, let's put that. Up. They're all muted. That's what's going on. So, yeah. So we have this layer is a kick out of Studio Drummer. Yeah. Stadium Kick Kick. That's basically how I named that one. Um, The top of another, which I'll play you. I think what it sounded like before selecting the pool. Yeah, that. And they're just different layers to give the top end character. Because I want it to sound bit live you know so you have just that that and then this is like kind of a really distorted kick sound which is yeah and oh the vocal is just from a sample pack if which is not where I'd put it. I think I'd probably figure out the name of it from uh Back in the days we were all dancing to the same beat. Release yourself in I think it's something on Loop Masters, I think, because that's just like the demo samples they give you. I was like, oh these work. Yeah. Back to the kicks. We have all four of these layers together. They sound okay. But after a bit of processing, and I'll go through each thing if you want. It just gives us like a really punchy kick sound that I wanted to go after like a live kick where you can really hear like the beater smacking and then a little bit of low end. So you would mic, say, the drum from the, or the inside. You would mic the inside of the drum from like the sound hole if this is making any sense at all from like how a drum looks, a kick drum. You'd put the mic in the sound hole so you can get the beater and then the body of the drum. And that's basically what I tried to recreate here. Yeah, basically layer it for top end or low end, depending on which layer I start from. Like sometimes I'll, how I usually go about it is I find a sound that has at least one part of what I'm looking for, whether it's a cool like character a top end like airiness or a punchy like low end. And then I'll work from whichever layer that is and try to find other parts to emphasize it or add to it to make it sound better. Then a whole lot of compression and EQ to make it fit all together and sound like one sound. If that wasn't too much. I could put a, yeah, I could do a video on that. <laughs> yeah, so we have an EQ. Just to get rid of some muddiness that was going on. Then there's this thing, which is one of my favorite plugins. It's called the Slick HDR. So the idea of it is, you know how HDR photography is, where you take you take one picture at the proper exposure. You take one underexposed, which is really dark, one overexposed, which is too much light, and you blend them all together to get like a hyper realistic like picture. So basically all this does is kind of blend three compressors together, sort of. Like it explained in like the manual or the website a bit more. But it's like a compressor with a fast attack to catch the peaks, and then a comp slower compressor to kind of even things out and bring up more detail in the mix. And they're just, so you, you could basically like recreate it with two or three compressors in a line going for different things. That's how you can really even out sounds like vocals and stuff that, I mean, professionals like do it, but I, I'm not there yet. But yeah, it's a free plugin by Variety of Sound and Tokyo Dawn. You can still find it on the internet. It's 32 bit only, so you have to use it with a bridge like J Bridge or 32 Lives 
Or if you have FL Studio, it'll work them automatically. Yeah. It's one of my favorites. It works for just about anything. I even use it on mastering sometimes just for a little bit of compression. And it helps get things loud without overdoing it, I think, when you really want to dial it in. Hope that wasn't too much. Um, <laughs> so we got, let's do that with and without. And then... The low end is a bit more full, and you can kind of hear like the like the hiss from the top end samples. Yeah, they come out just a bit more, and it's like subtle things just to help it blend more. And then just another EQ, just the balance issues, about not issues. Free plugin by Melda Productions. They have a whole like suite of plugins that are really great and cover just about everything you would need. Creative stuff, mixing, mastering, whatever. So go check that out. It's the Melda Productions free bundle. And this is, I just flipped through presets so I found one to sound a bit better. It adds a lot of character and a lot of like oomph or, you know, something to it. Then, or without, and with. Yeah, just to punch it a little bit more. Then you got another EQ because as you compress things, some problem areas start poking out a bit more. And that just pulls down in the area of the kick, which you don't really need too much. Like it adds body and snap, but you don't need too much of it, you know? You have a lot more going on in the mix that needs room. Then trusty sausage fattener at like 1% just to keep it from clipping basically. And then the transient designer to tighten it just that much more. Like it's really subtle, but yeah. And that is the kick. And then you just bounce it out and you got uh, wherever the actual kick is all the way over here. It's got a bit too much reverb on it. Yeah, it's a bit quieter, so it sounds different. But yeah, that's uh, that's basically how I go about kicks most of the time. Either if it's not one I already made or put together, then it usually there's like one or two layers that just go into it. Nothing like crazy, because after a while you're just adding things to add things, but you're probably not getting what you need. You know. You can process it enough to get the sound you want after a while. Most of the time, you know? So there's a kick. Then. My drum bird's a bit loud. Yeah. I put my drum through a, just a reverb just for the drums. It's all routed to the drum bus. Compress it all together, that kind of thing. Just helps create a, an entire like image or like one cohesive sound of drums. Like they all came from the same place. And a lot of them did, a lot of them didn't. Like the snare, stick snare rim thing also came from the stadium kit or whatever from Native Instruments. That's what all these two like blank deals over here are. Or everything before I bounced them out. Then you have more um, loops, like. Yep. That's just, they're all compressed together because you don't really need a whole lot of dynamic range through your percussion and whatnot. You just want it there to kind of fill in space and push the groove along. And there's side chain to the kick because so like duck out of the way. I want the kick to like poke out, you know. But only slightly. And you can see how the amount that duck down differs every time because the kick I have the volume basically to act as a ghost kick. So like solid kick, a little bit less, two quieter ones. 
So like if you are actually playing it like solo alone, you can tell it's the same sample over and over different volumes, but when it's played with everything else, it feels more realistic, I think. And yeah. Is that helping at all? Is that a good explanation? Let me know. Just checking stuff over here. Um, but yeah, I guess, uh, what do you want to go over next? Anything specific? The bass is interesting. I could do that. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's definitely the drums. They're a bit messy, but they're still like tightened together. Which, uh, yeah, just want some like funky, I guess. All right, bass line. Oh, that's the, that's the single bass. Um, when I get find like a saddest, like a saddest, um, when I'm like satisfied with it in a, like before I bounce that off and did this whole track, I usually start with like a loop. So it was basically a just, I had figured that out like a four bar loop first and I made sure it sounded great in the placement and then I bounced it out. And then from there, as the mix goes, I just kind of adapted it to the mix with a bit of EQ was a lot of top end and then more transient master to make it a bit tighter and more snappy just because that's how things started working out as I went, you know? But yeah, it's basically when you feel it's the right time kind of thing. When you know, you know. <laughs> but yeah, this bass line is an interesting one to figure out. So you have these. I want to like a deep house kind of feel and those like chords are always in there. Yeah. Let me tell me what song that was. <laughs> but anyway, um, that I wanted something like really with a lot of movement and to have like groove. And I was just messing around and came up with this. And without any plugins, it's it's basically the bass sound I use in almost all my tracks since I don't know, cause it's just like really harmonic sub that sometimes I use just like that, but with distortion so and but when filtered down it's just really harmonic and has a lot of movement and it pokes out of small speakers big speakers it's it was perfect for my uses basically like it's not technically crazy or anything it's just triangle wave a bit of noise mixed in some distortion in here filtered down low pass just a little bit um this phase gives a lot of movement. So. And a lot of times I have it even more. So. But that at specific rates, it adds like harmonics and, you know, helps make a stronger bass sound. But anyway, filter down. So 
coffee and like that. It just sounds kind of, kind of, uh, I don't know, stiff. And it does slide. That's the whole way to get this groove going. Then it's filtered down because it's layered with itself, which is that top layer. We'll get to that. And then this is where like the real movement happens is this LFO tool preset that I tweaked. So it goes from just sounding like, like that to uh, And I got lucky that it just happened to work right and open and close and everything. And all it does is automate like a filter back and forth, which is just like a phaser. But that's a bit of drive and a bit of movement. It automates the volume up and down too. So instead of just saying consistent, it's like open and closing in and out still rhythmically and that's the same one that's on the filter and then it has like a few other things going on like it pans a bit but it doesn't because it's a mono sound but yeah and now the thing is it's matched with the top layer which is what's doing all the work so you have it sounds really thin right and it, again it's just the same sound but a bit more full body that's how I like normally use that sound Somewhat, you know, it is a preset that I made. Yeah, call it the phasey pitch bass because that's all it does is phases oddly. And yeah, like it's the same bass as in the sample that does not track ants in my pants or whatever that I posted on SoundCloud. It's the same one. If you listen to that mix I put on there in the in a few tracks and those it's in the remix i just showed you earlier when i was doing the mix and stuff yeah it's just really versatile just for like a low end anyway but this is where all like the processing goes so you have that right it's nice and fat already add an eq you got to filter all that to lay on top of the other one distortion yeah so like if I didn't EQ out the bottom end that's kind of how this where I start from and if you listen closely you can hear that harmonic poking out yeah. that's exactly what you want then you have the LFO tool giving you that movement yeah and that's where the whole track basically the whole track idea comes from is that right there layered together they both have the same amount of movement but the phaser filter whatever it affects this a lot more because it's more high frequency content than just a sub yeah I like that it's kind of stabby kind of it moves and just and then once you add the drums, it just kind of, it's like being on, I don't know, a boat. It just kind of goes up and down and in and out and it makes you seasick. I don't know. It rolls. It's a roller. Let's do that. That's my version of a roller. Yeah. So it's basically what you hear all the time about resampling, you know, bouncing down the audio, splitting your frequencies and all that. I don't like doing that because I like to keep tweaking things as I go. So I just keep it as a synth and then double it and duplicate it and duplicate it until I get what I want, basically. Because there's another layer, I think. No, I think that's just a bounce version for the, yeah, for the, yeah, it's the Endless Smile plugin. <laughs> that's just like filtered. Then it ends. Yeah. So basically it's the same sound tweaked, but the little, all like how I have like this whole stack of plugins after the LFO tool. That's what normally is on this sound. If I use it by itself. Okay. 
How is it so wide? That's what I'm getting to. That's actually in the synth itself. Is it? Wait, no, it's not. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. All right. So see, you have eight voices in stereo. If you put the re trigger on, it's smack dab down the middle and take it off. It, the re trigger, what that does is trigger the wave at the uh, same point in the cycle. So you have a wave is basically a circle. If you think about it, like it's, you have 360 degrees. That's why you have like this phase knob over here. You have the end and the beginning of the wave. And if you start them all at the same time, it's basically the same time, the same sound. But if you start them offset from each other, then that's where you get phasing. Cause one line might start at the bottom, one wave start at the bottom, one might start a few seconds or whatever into the wave and then so on and so forth. And they start differently. It's basically, I don't know. I can't say basically cause like, I know what I mean, but I'm having trouble coming up. Why? So yeah, it's just, it's a timing thing. Basically they're all offset by a little bit. So you get them flying all over the place basically. Like, okay, one second, my laptop's about to die, so I'm grabbing the charger. All right, we're good. So, yeah, the thing about, so stereo sounds just to talk a bit more, I guess. Stereo is, um, if you have two sounds that are exactly the same and you play them in stereo and pan them left, right, it's going to sound mono still because of the same thing. They'll sum together and you'll get a mono sound. But if you play them out of time, just set a little bit, you'll your ear will pick up on the difference between the left and right. And that's what creates the stereo image. Basically it's the timing difference. That's kind of crudely explained, but yeah. So when you have eight separate waves going at the same time, eight voices, you get that effect. So if I mono it, yeah, the like phasing, effect is definitely more apparent when it's mono that's why you hear like don't have stereo bass or whatever because when it's put to mono you might have phasing issues or if you wide think widen things too much you might get issues where things start to disappear because if like two waves hit each other and they're off by 180 degrees which is like i'm trying to figure out a way to explain it but if they're off by like half their uh, length they'll cancel each other out. Like if they're inverted, basically I'll find like a better way to explain it. Like you can read it. But yeah. So that's mono then. And that's how you get that, that widen. The phaser just has movement. So if we play it without the phaser, It's the combination of the volume. See, you can hear it in there. Then you automated the volume with it too. And it's, yeah, it all just works together. <laughs> then we got an EQ. And delay. This just adds like, more wide it like widens the sound it's another trick i picked up from watching a black sun empire tutorial video they have for like cubase or music future music or something like that so basically if you 
only get the wet sound, it's yeah, it's ping ponged really fast. So when it's really fast, it just you kind of hear it as one sound. And if you put it as a layer, it just adds a wider kind of image to it. A little bit in this case. Um, guitar rig, all this is doing is compressing it. Yeah. Yeah, compressing it heavily. Another EQ to make it fit better. Because as you compress and distort things, additional harmonics, more low end starts popping up. And I'm layering it with a relatively clean sub, so I just want to get all that out of there. So with and without. Then another source of compression. There's a lot. <laughs> then this. Now this really helps clean up. Like it's already pretty tight together, but the white noise kind of hangs a little bit too much. So what I do is just smack it all the way down. So you can heal the air in it and everything from compressing it so much. See, if you go that way, it brings up the body out of it. But if you go the other way, it just tightens it. It makes it that much cleaner. You guys following so far? Not going too fast. Then saturator. Yeah, the basic saturation preset, I think. Just to give it a bit more. And then it's filtered all the way down. And my that much ah, and while that might not sound much on its own, layer it with the sub, give it all that body back, and it's You have the low end, you have both layers working together, the same movement, so it makes one cohesive sound. It's like you think it's one like patch, and it basically is, but they're both broken up to give the right amount of, I guess, attention to both sounds. So together they sound better than if it was just one of itself. It would be really like difficult and kind of to like work around with just one patch doing the same thing and if I was like a better at commitment I could have just bounced the first one the audio then done it that way but I was still playing around with the riff as the whole track as I was making the rest of the track so yeah then I have a little bit of reverb that you can't really hear but it's there just subtly on that top end which doesn't really go any further down. Yeah, it starts rolling off at about 200 hertz. So it's not really a bass sound at that point. Which, giving a little reverb adds some space, especially when there's not much else going on. And all I did in the second half was disable this top EQ. That's it. So you go from this that to and all that does is add just a little bit of white noise and character to the top and all I did was unfilter the first sound you know yeah It looks really technical, but all it is is like subtle tweaks every now and then just to really get, like coax out the sound you, you want. Cause like sine waves are basically pure tones until you start compressing them and adding harmonics and this and that. And then you can get really cool things out of it or triangle waves, this, whatever. And cool thing, that white noise really activates the reverb that it's going through. So that opens up, adds a bit more space, and adds to the overall vibe, I think. So 
Yeah. With drums, we have... Okay, with drums and filter down. I think. Let me do that right. Cool. Without the filter. Yeah, and that's how I did that. Like, it's cool, that higher layer with all the harmonic content and movement. Like, it has a lot of left-right movement, too, which is cool when you're listening on headphones. And it also will poke out on, like, monitors or bigger speakers in, like, a live setting. Because without that, like, movement at the top, or just that top layer with the harmonic content, it doesn't really have the same edge to it, you know? Another synth? What do you mean? There is another synth. Um, yeah, and the little donks or beeps or whatever you want to call them is Spire. Yeah, two different things from Spire. And they're just presets because I don't really care. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can find what this sound like before I like I picked it up and basically turned it into what it was what it is no, um, should be a... because before like the first bounce sounds a lot different yeah when it was just like a sketch um, I wasn't too loud release yourself in the dance a bit similar but I didn't know where to take it. Yeah, I'll get to the snaps real quick. And become one with the music. The drums are still pretty. Yeah, I had at this at that point I had figured out what I wanted to do with the bass. And the rest was just mixing it so it sounded better. I think I did something else at the time. Release back. yourself. Back in the day. Nah, it's just the first half. Um, so those just mixing those in. It's just EQ. Like making sure there's not a whole lot of low end. A bit of compression and distortion to kind of make it a bit grittier. This pulls down, I use a transient master just about anything, just to either make it cleaner or add a bit more body or air to a sound. You know, you flip it one way, it takes away the sustain or the fullness of it. You flip it the other way and it brings up more, so. Like this one just has an EQ on it just to Take out the low end. Yep. Yeah, another thing, which is how they fit together, is down to arrangement. Like, the only sounds that play at the same time are the two layer, the sub layers the top and bottom. Otherwise, they are separate. So, like you have down here, there's just one note next to each other. Got this bottom sub layer. And they just kind of, like, yes. All the drums are sent to a bus. Everything is sent to a bus. I have four of them, five, four, five. There's a drum bus, bass, synths, and synths and pads. Pads go into the synth pad bus. 
which is right here. And then there's one for effects and one for vocals when I have them. And then effects sends down at the bottom, long verb, short reverb, delay, and an extra effect that I don't know what I was doing with. But yeah. And that's just cause to process each group together and if I like bounce out stems to mix, which I rarely do, then I can just have four simple ones to put together. Yeah, but arrangement, that's all. All the notes just, they hit all at different times and they kind of continue the same, it would basically be the same melodic line, but split over different different instruments. Yeah. And all the little bits on the outside are just bounce versions where they have effects going through. So like... <laughs> Then there's like an upright bass thing just as like a layer when the when like the top gritty thing isn't going back and forth i just have that to kind of fill up that mid-range give it a bit more movement add to the whole like jazz vibe i got going on which came all the way at the end it's like what if i just add like a jazz loop to it i was like wait that actually works <laughs> yeah um do I put an extra limiter or compressor on the bus? On the drum bus, yes. There's a compressor, there's a supercharger from Native Instruments. It's like the free version they gave away for like Christmas one year. I'm all about free plugins. With like the drum bus preset. With a bit of compression, it adds like within the plugin, I think this like dirt button is adding like a heavily compressed like parallel signal. So parallel compression basically. And that makes them a bit more crunchy. Punchy punch is basically it emphasizes the punch of the drums, like so what you would get with a compressor with a slow attack, like the the um transient pops through and then the body is what's compressed. So it emphasizes that. Then there's an EQ with this a preset that sounds good, basically. <laughs> it's called the Slick EQ by Variety of Sound and Tokyo Dawn Labs. The same guys that did the Slick HDR plugin I showed you earlier, except this one is 64-bit and works on Mac. So there's a free version, and then there's a paid version what gives you more flexibility. But yeah, I just throw on a preset. It just kind of cleans up the sound and then there's a pro l which all it does it hits the extra transients that's all i'm doing because once you start like compressing and distorting stuff especially drums like the transient gets more and more emphasized and that can hurt when you're getting into like the mastering point and you have all these transients attacking this compressor way too much which can make it react weirdly just like you might um, like not have it compress the bass. If I can show you. Like the one I use most of the time is the glue. And I have it to where it doesn't compress anything under 155 hertz. Because there's a lot of energy in the sub. And that could really mess with the compression you're going. And make it more erratic when I want it more smooth. You know? A lot of compressors have this... Um, ability yeah like you can press it all together but then you're like once you adjust one thing it'll throw off the rest of the mix and that could be just troublesome and then you go on like multi-band compression and that can just mess everything up really fast so yeah all it does is get the transients so if you have both of these up at the same time you should be able to see like this is a master compressor this one over here and i just have like a little bit going on but if i don't have the drums limited and the transients pop through you get wait it's not even oh it's bypassed that's yeah that's not gonna show you anything all right see it's very like peaky turn it on it's a bit more managed 
you know, a bit more evened out. And that helps when you add the rest of the mix. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll just limit the drum bus just to get rid of, like, stray transients. If you do it too much, it'll affect the sound. But if you do it just enough to get that trans to cut off the transients, it'll just help clean things for later. And it won't really affect the sound. Does that help? Hope so. <laughs> um, for the other buses, there's nothing on the bass. Usually I put like a saturation or something or an EQ just to get the really low end that I might not have EQ'd out first. Pads, there's nothing going on there. Sometimes I might put a sausage fattener just to really tie a sound together. It like any on less than 5% because once you start going past that, you might, you'll start hearing a little bit of distortion or it might get a little too crushed. And you want something subtle just to up the volume, add a little bit of character and really glue the sounds together. I'll even stick it on the master sometimes just to get a few more decibels out without really messing up the sound which in, anyone will tell you is bad or frowned upon, but really if it sounds good, and it does most of the time, then you, you'll be fine. Like there are rules, but there aren't like hard, fast rules. It's just mostly guidelines. Because when you're starting out and you want to put everything on everything and you don't really know why, but you're just doing it, or you might be doing it because you read about it and it's like, oh, well, they know what they're talking about, so I guess I can listen to them, you know which can work with or against me. But I'm like, I'm telling you, I'm trying to like be objective and tell you both sides. You can, you can do it. And if it sounds good, cool. If it doesn't in that context, then try something else. But yeah, you don't have to, don't use a limiter or don't stack these or it's, it's whatever sounds good. Like if professionals making like pop music, which is ridiculously processed, can stack tons of compressors and EQs and all this and still get a clean dynamic sound, like an objective, if objectively. You might not like it, but objectively it's clean. In your own opinion, it might be too hyped or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, if they can get it with a little bit of practice, eventually I could or any of us could too. Never... People offer advice as if they're like end all be all rules and they're not. You basically have options to do whatever you want to do. And that's what I do. Just about. Unless it doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I don't know. Everything else is kind of in this track is not all that technical. It's just layers and stuff. Release yourself in the dance. Like, I didn't do anything to the vocal. Free your inner vision. A guitar rig preset called Epic Voice. That's it. Release yourself in the dance. Without? Release yourself in the dance. With? Nothing scientific about that. It was a preset. EQ to balance it out. Release yourself in the dance. This is a uh, vocal automation, so I can cut off the... Um, the delay at a drop at the drop basically so dance into the same yep that's all it does dance into the same and then a plugin i didn't use which is the vocal doubler from way no isotope it's free free your inner visions this makes it wide but i wasn't feeling that after a while free your inner visions dude you can totally put reverb and delay on your subs just filter it a bit. Like a lot of Reese's and older like jungle tracks or just jungle influence tracks nowadays, they do have a little bit of delay, but it's a mono delay and it helps fill up space. Spy does it a few times in his album. I'm pretty sure like I've gone through that album. I can tell you about every track because <laughs> that was like, you can do this. I can do that. <laughs> so I was like, I got to learn every technique. But yeah, a little bit of delay can help fill up space down there it's fine stereo delay can help too as long as it's not super super low i'm gonna say like 75 hertz and below that'll just 
get weird unless you're doing it for like an effect. And that will come down to arrangement. So if you have like a pulsing sub, it's just like boom, boom. And you just might have boom, 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 boom. That could work as long as you do it cleanly, you know, maybe put it on like a send or something. Yeah, I do reverb on mine's all, mine all the time and just filter it out from the bottom, the super low end. Not in this too much, but in other tracks. Um, oh, I guess I can show you guys this. So this like interesting melodic sound, Release not the vocal. <laughs> yeah. Now that is, it's going to be interesting once you hear what it actually, what it was at first. All right. So it's this. And without any plugins, it's this. I was going to have that going at first, other than like the, but it was like, I started just playing with plugins and like the whole rhythm that's going on. I'm basically copying it and it's going through this like chord machine thing which is really cool when I want to like come up with different piano progressions. I haven't used it in a while, but I like decide, I thought about using this when I was just like out doing something. I was like, wait, this could help turn this track around. So I end up sticking it through just the baseline melody through it, baseline riff, whatever. And it came up with those chords. Yeah. So anyway, Yeah, it's like I can make this work. <laughs> and you guys remember that LFO tool I used on the bass? I just brought it up here. That's all I did. Added a, I added a bit more uh, resonance to the filter, a bit more drive. I changed it to I think the other ones are like Phase Phaser Thirty Six or something like that bit more variation which I still not really sure what that does but it sounds good yep I still vinyl to give it take out some of that low end and an EQ you have this really like washy movement of a sound then bounced it out and only cut in the parts that I wanted so basically to switch back from like the marimba sound and then put it through some reverb and delay and you get this. So and both are doing the same riff as the sub just with chords on top instead of a single note. So together you get So it's all like in the arrangement. They're just layers that are helping push things forward, you know, melodically or, or harmonically. That's the that's the right word, harmonically. Nothing all that technical, not like a bunch of counter things going on. It's just all the same. But it's in the arrangement which helps it move forward things either occupy the same space or they react off of each other to help push things forward. Is this, nope, it's not on SoundCloud. I like, this should, this will be going to an EP I'm working on. I just need to finish the last track, which I gotta edit some vocals for and that'll be done. Yeah, you have heard that 
the track I'm working on, you've heard an early version of it. It's in it's in the video about layering breaks. So if you want to hear it, it sounds like that, except hopefully a lot better now because I've mixed it in and done the whole arrangement. And there's some uh, surprise vocal on it. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to dig that up, that'd be a good one. But yeah, I can, if you want, I can play most of it for you so you can get an idea of the whole thing while I disappear to the bathroom, I guess, and get a drink and stuff. Yeah. Let's go for it. Jazzy vibe. Yeah, it'll be probably out in, I don't know, if all things go to plan, a few months, basically. That's how all that works. Or it might be for, who knows. Release yourself in the dance. Free your inner visions. Let your spirit loose. Become one with the music. I didn't realize that. Oh, shit. That's funny. Anyway. Back in the days. It is not out yet. I literally just finished it a few weeks ago. A few days ago. Back in the days. Back in the days. Yeah, 10 hour loop. Back in the days. Back in the days. 
Yep, and that like little Rhodes keys thing is again the same riff. I f- pushed the simplicity as far as I could in this track. <laughs> I just wanted it to move along. I'm pretty sure it's the shortest track I've ever made. Yeah, it's three minutes thirty nine seconds. That's about as short as it gets for me. Straight to the point. <laughs> um, what will it be called? I have no idea. I'm still thinking of names. I don't want to do anything like I like to do like things like creatively or not creatively, but like kind of out there names that isn't just like roller or I don't know. You know how things normally are like darkness or sunrise or some weird ass name groove. (laughs) Yeah. When? No idea. Yeah. That's basically I want to go like an old school house vibe. That's what I started with, like the little beeps or whatever I call them, donks. Yeah. You could tell me what song that is. Yeah, that's basically what <laughs> um, inspired this at first. I was like, well, what if I take like old sounds basically and then kind of put like a new twist on them which is a lot of how I try and write is like doing something that's been done but taking it with like a different twist because everything's basically been done already but ways you can do it can still be like done differently you know like the everything's a remix idea hmm you can only do the same chord progression so many times before you really need to switch things up or approach it differently or oh, that's all I like going about it. So yeah. Um thanks. I I didn't I thought it'd be weird. I still think it's weird, but I think it can work with its weirdness. Cause sometimes things can be too creative to where it doesn't make any sense and it kind of loses focus as like what it's trying to be. And I think I nailed it pretty much, at least my idea of it. Still have no idea how, you know, a lot of how it would be perceived like outside of me and you guys that are hearing it now. Yeah. Okay. You know, the song. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Um, I wonder what else I can pick through. Or do you guys want to do something completely different? I don't know. Again, this is how I open it up every time, so I'm surprised and like laughing when I try to open a track up. Uh, you can pick one out of the list. I don't care. Or a track of mine that you want to like go through that I haven't done like a breakdown thing for. Maybe I have, but I didn't go over something you wanted to to know or to hear about. Yeah. Um Ooh, this whole yeah, it's going way back. What is this? I keep looking at it like I don't know what it is, and I know I do. But it doesn't have a name, so I can't remember what track it is. Ah, okay, it's that one. Not got it. Later. <laughs> See ya. Yeah, it's late over there. Um, the dark swing is the one. Is that the one we just listened to? Um, I feel like it's an old project of it. Oh, no, that one's just like a sketch. It doesn't make any sense, but we can go through it. I don't know where to take it. <laughs> Later, HB. Yeah, if it's late for you guys and you guys want to go to sleep, we can pick this up another day, <laughs> another early, at an earlier time. 
It's 5 p.m. over here. Um, yeah, what is this? Yeah, just a loop I came up with. Yeah, nothing all that great. Um, piano parts I like played and recorded just one day sitting at the piano. I was like, I'm going to record some stuff. How long have I been producing? So I started in like m around March 2011 because that was the last, the end of my senior year of high school and I was 17. And now I'm 26. <laughs> so it's been a while. A little bit. What the hell? Okay. Yeah. These are piano parts that you just recorded one day. If you, I'll send them to you. If you guys are like part of the Discord channel. Link in the description. <laughs> I'll put these in there because I, I don't really use them. There's like four or five different progressions, I think. Yeah, let me find the actual folder where they live. Oh, okay, so that's not there anymore. I gotta find it now. Volumes, local, program file. No, users me google drive winslow oh my god and this is set root got it um where did i put them anyway i'll find them at some point because, oh, nice, 26, <laughs> I'm old, <laughs> not really, um, I'm trying to figure out where I put them, oh, okay, there it is, I didn't see him at first, so yeah, you can like hear the seat moving that I'm sitting on. Just a bunch of loops of the same progression. E minor, it's E flat to D minor seven. Could I? I don't think there's a piano loaded in this project. But yeah, I just recorded on like my Zoom recorder, which is somewhere behind me. Um, yeah, and stuck it through effects. So I don't know. Yeah, it could be something <laughs> at some point, but uh, I don't know. I just don't, I'm like stuck in loop land with it where it just goes over and over and I don't know where to move it next, you know? Uh, I don't know what I was thinking that day. It's all like, I'm pretty sure it wasn't around Halloween or some creepy time. Nice. <laughs> They're all 26. Um, but yeah, that's what this project is. Basically nothing. <laughs> I can find another one though. With more stuff to do. That's what we went through earlier. Um, no, cause I think I made too many changes. Mm. Show you 
This one. This you probably heard it. I'm pretty sure I've played this in like one of the videos or something, like an earlier version. But I think this is the final version of a track that will be on the CP, hopefully. It's a loud water bottle. What are you guys up to other than watching me do music stuff? You know, how's your days, nights going? Yeah, it's all old. So yeah, I, th I think that at first, but then there's only like a few really young people that are like big right now. And then or I got started younger, but a lot of people are just like they all like between like 20s and 30s. You don't really look that different, I guess, other than maybe more facial hair or something. And there are a lot of people that I thought were like around the same age and like, oh, they're 30 in the 30s or something and they're doing fine. And then people, at least in like drum and bass, like it doesn't age doesn't really matter because there are a lot of like older guys that have just been doing it forever or might have just gotten kind of big in the last few years that are, no one's really caring, you know? So it's cool. Ooh, 1 a.m. Sound like me last night. Yeah. If you need to go to sleep, go ahead. <laughs> uh, we can play this. You probably heard it. Um, yeah. bit earlier next time. ahead so you can uh, use the rest of that 10 minutes to do whatever you gotta do <laughs> yeah guys are from like Europe and yeah. which is why I try to start earlier in the day which is still like evening for you guys so I'll keep that in mind for sure yeah <laughs> um, this is a sample from like an old track that I can't find anymore I'll play the okay well basically after that it's the same thing but, um, 
Yeah, let me look for it over here. Like I follow a lot of like channels on YouTube that post a ton of old vinyl that you basically can't find anymore. And I happened, this one popped up. I was like, oh, I could use that. It's like the first little bits of the string part. And there's some drums, but I managed to filter them out good enough. But when I went back to look to see if it was still there, because the label I sent it to at first was like, yeah, where'd the sample come from? I was like, oh, here it is. Oh, wait, it's gone. And the only place you can find even proof that this track exists is on Discogs. And there's like no vinyl available. There's no preview for it. So I'll have, I have no idea how this would potentially need to be cleared if possible. But yeah, I think this is it. So you can see which parts I cut out. <laughs> yeah, like switch keys. Yeah, but I just cut out the beginning of it basically and arranged is this it? Oh, I have to retime it too. No, that's what I cut from, but I just made this out of it. Yeah, loops it at different parts and then cuts in and out of di different parts of the progression and retimed it so it moves and then plugins and you get this. And then add a nice bass under it and then the rest. Yeah. So if you're here earlier and I was like talking about liquid jump up and how you could do that, I tried. I feel like that's what could, what the second drop is or is supposed to be like. It's got like the drum rhythms of jump up more like um, Kings of the Roller style. So. Yeah. But still, nice little filtery reese going on with the 808s every now and then, and the sample. Um, yeah. So the vocals are just like a sample pack or random ones. Yeah. Doing my thing. Let me see if I can pick those out. Where are they? Cause yeah, I sampled the uh terrorist renegade, um what was that Ray Keith? Yeah, you guys it's down here actually. Hope it's not too loud. But if I play the intro, you know what I'm talking you probably know what I'm talking about. The, that's not the intro yeah that or the intro is yeah that like classic one whatever just for like a grease layer it's not the main sub but it's the top so you have the sub is basically sub and then Um, depending on what it is, you would have to clear it, but it's such like an out there track 
that's not like going to be, I don't know, picked up and then it's altered enough to be safe. You would clear it, but realistically you really wouldn't have to worry about it, you know? But yeah, vocals are, I was looking for those. I don't know. Yeah, it's cut out like this. Why they lie? I don't know. Why they try, try to provoke me, try to leave me, but good. Cause when so basically, that's from a website called Looperman, which people upload like their own samples, their own, it's basically audio too. And usually it's like Creative Commons, so you can use it with like their name or you can use it commercially or whatever like that. I'm pretty sure this was one of them. I had like downloaded a long time ago and just like cut out a few words from it. And then the, I think that's both of these. Ah. Yeah, that was pitched. Both of those pitched up or pitched down. And then this one is, it says stay in your lane. <laughs> Is uh, I'm pretty sure I cut it from a like, YouTube video, I think, because I was trying to find that exact phrase because that's what I was going to name the track. Um, where is it? Select and pull. Just stay in your lane. Yeah. Just stay in your lane. Which I don't know if I have the whole thing. I might have deleted it already where it actually like the video it came from. But it's just like this girl talking about something and she's like, well, you got to do this and, you know, you can't get in people's business or something. So you got to, sometimes you got to stay in your lane. It's like, all right, that works. I'm just cut it up and pitch it down. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's how that happened. Stay in your lane. Then a few, uh, stay in your lane effects to give it a bit more dimension, a bit more space. Yeah, and that's the vocals. Um, yeah, Looperman and freesound.org are two really good places to just find random recordings people have uploaded. That's where all these like extra like ambient sounds come from, they came from free sound. Not like the white noise sweeps, but like this. It's just like people talking in an airport. That's all it is. Filter it down, add a bit of reverb, so it adds a bit of space, and it works as a cool background. It kind of puts you in a space of the whole track. I do that with most or just about all of my tracks, unless I really want like a clean intro or something. I'll have like an atmosphere, something going on in the background. If, uh, oh, if you listen to the sound, the song, I just uploaded to the SoundCloud called Fresh Cakes or whatever. Like it has that sample from Ted 2, the movie, all the way at the end. And that's where like the idea of the track came from. But in the middle break, if you listen really closely, there's someone just like whispering and they're just like saying like a poem or something, but they're supposed to be like in the shower. So it sounds like they're in a shower. No, there's two samples. There's one person just like, yeah, and this and this, like a woman or something. And it's really weird to listen to by itself and kind of creepy. And then one is just like someone singing in the shower, like opera style. And it just, put the reverbs and delays and effects, it really adds just like an ambience and like a space, you know? And put together, it's really creepy, but it's really quiet in there. So unless you're listening to like headphones or really loud when it gets to that part, you're not gonna hear it. But when it does play, you you feel it, even though you don't, you're like, what is that in the background? You know? No, it's something weird to kind of, it keeps your interest because you don't exactly, you can't, Ah, you can't exactly tell what it is, but it's interesting enough to like grab your attention that you want to find out what it is, you know? A little trick. <laughs> I think I made a video on like that called like adding noise or something. It was like one of the earlier ones where 
before I really got like the whole routine down of how to make a video and not and edit it correctly and stuff. Yeah, I have I've used I think I have one from a train station that I use all the time. It's so I got we got traffic, yeah, train station. <laughs> And like at some point, like the train passes by in it. And I think I use that. It's kind of like a riser effect. And it just happened to lay at the right time of the track when I dropped it in there. Yeah, stuff like that is what can really add depth. And it's not something you're ever going to find like a tutorial on or something. Just like, oh, add weird sounds to convince your listeners to keep listening or something. It just. Like how samples from like sam like when you sample vinyl it has like the hiss and stuff on top of it. It's basically kind of like that. It's adding a bit of character, a bit of randomness to it when everything else might be quantized and perfect sense and crystal clear. You got like this weird stuff going on in the background. Yeah. When I, I started doing it because new tone made a in one of them he's got like three tutorials for future music magazine which are on youtube about like making breaks or recreating samples and he did something similar to add just like atmosphere to the intro of his track tides i think and yeah i started doing it since then because i was like yeah that makes complete sense you're just filling in frequencies that are otherwise not there but you're not doing it in a distracting way. You feel it more than you hear it. You're not paying attention to this train going by, but subtly, like, you know it's there. But it, you hear it as part of everything else and not as an individual sound. And that really helps, I think, in my opinion. It's all my opinion, <laughs> you know? But again, like context is what makes it work because this might not work in something I want more to be more clean, but something like this that's like fun and energetic and just kind of drives along, it, it works perfectly. Yep, the noise, a uh, nice noise bed. It isn't the noise floor, which is gross and you don't want. Yeah. Anything else? Oh, there's nothing real else to pick apart. The drums I've, showed you guys before nothing nothing too too great yeah bit of processing because it took a lot to get them how i wanted but yeah since you guys are uh other side of the planet <laughs> you know i'll let you guys go and yeah i'll get something to eat because i've been at this for a bit Hopefully the mi I think one of the tracks got flagged earlier from the mix, but if it didn't, because last week's mix, every tr almost all the tracks got flagged, and one got like one track made the whole video get blocked in everywhere. So I just deleted it. So I'll look through that, or maybe I'll edit it down so just this part is up, so you guys or someone else can watch it back and pick through parts. Because I guess there's a bit. I would say there's some useful information in here. Yeah. But, uh, ooh, wow, three hours. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, that's it for today. I will be around a bit earlier next Sunday for this. That'll be, so like noonish here would be, what's, no, nah, that's still like kind of late where you guys are. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll make an event. You can guys can if you if you want if you haven't come to the Discord channel link in the description, so you can hear things early. I will post a lot of the samples and stuff I was talking about, and you can hear like full versions of these tracks without me talking over it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, thanks uh, for hanging out. Be back next week, and I'll, there'll probably be like random ones during the week too of me just doing mixes or just working on tracks if i remember to turn the stream and stuff on because sometimes when i'm like working in a full project with like plugins going it'll glitch and stuff but i'll we'll see
Yeah. Thanks for uh, hanging out. I'll uh, look for a new video either tomorrow or Tuesday. See how fast I can edit it because <laughs> editing takes forever. Thanks. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, I'll let you guys listen to this one more time. Just uh, this half. And I'll uh, see you next time. you guys next time any questions comments whatever just leave them send me a message put them in the comments i'll check back later for sure and uh that's all for me see you let me flip this off real quick <laughs> thanks for hanging out